All right, folks, I am back from the day of trout fishing. I am putting this at the beginning of the video, although it was after everything else, because uh, as you'll see coming up, I go over some of the top lures for using to fish for trout. Um, but what I learned throughout the day, especially at the end of the day, that hardly any of them worked, except for one, and that was the trout magnet. Uh, you got the MEP spinners, the rooster tails, the Rapala, the original Rapala, and the Countdown, and the Rebel Wee Crawl. I did get one on the Wee Crawl that fell off, and I had two light ticks, or light bites, I should say, on the rooster tails and MEP spinners. Uh, it took a friend of mine explaining to me why. Um, the lures that I read about on the internet that were the top 10 probably would be the best 10 for wild trout there's a huge different difference between stocked and wild trout and uh, my friend will made a very good point and i never really thought about it until i was coming home when we were talking to each other he said well you got to think about it uh those stock trout were raised where they got fed by people you know hand fed so they're not used to chasing after prey or having to chase a lure. Uh, the only thing that ended up working for me was the trout magnet. Fished under a cork three foot deep and barely pulling it, just barely moving it along. The only other thing I could have put under the cork was probably a MEP spinner or something, but it would have been moving so slow it wouldn't have spun. Okay, at this time live bait and natural baits you cannot are not allowed. So really the trout magnet was the only option. Those fish will only bite it if it's right next to them. They're not going to chase it because they're not used to having to chase down a meal because they're used to being fed probably. I don't know whatever they're, they're fed while they're in the hatchery there. They're just th throwing food to them. So that is a huge difference in their behavior. So that's why I put this at the beginning of the video to make it, uh, it's just, you know, this was a good learning experience for me because the next time I go, now I'll know exactly what to use and I'll understand that the methods are all slow, slow, slow. You know, when I was using those Rapalas and the Crawdad and the Rooster Tails and the MEP Spinners, I was, even though I was reeling it in slow, it was way too fast because I didn't have, because it was free and it wasn't under a float uh, under when something's under a float like a small small jigs or flies is the way to go because you can control the speed as slow as you want the other lures you, you can only make them so slow before they end up getting snagged on the bottom in a, in a tree or a, a rock or something all right i hope that was helpful to you it was to me next time i go back i will get more uh if i don't go back before february 1st uh, I will definitely go after February 1st. I'm going to try to get there as soon as possible on that date before they're uh, harvested very heavily because that is when you can start using the, the live bait and corn and whatnot. All right. All right, folks. In this episode, we're going to be doing something a little different out of the ordinary. And it involves the Missouri Trout Urban Program. Over the past few years, Missouri has really stepped up their game in conservation as far as stocking rainbow trout in local community lakes, smaller lakes that are typically five acres and less in size. Uh, you got several in St. Louis area, especially the August uh, Bush Wildlife Area. You got one in Perryville, Missouri called Legion Lake. You got Rotary Lake in Jackson. You got uh, one in Farmington, and I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Geisel or Geisel. Uh, so, there's a lot more opportunity for people. Like, for me, St. Louis is way too far to drive. Um, the 11 point is hard to fish during the winter months because you have to be in a canoe or kayak. It's With it being very dangerous, uh, as far as not really, I don't want to say dangerous, but hard to uh, not get out and have to push you got you got to get out to uh, push and pull or whatever and I don't want to have to do that so these small community lakes that are stocked with rainbow trout it gives people an opportunity to find somewhere close to home and they're easy to target 
they're well maintained and, and mowed and easy to walk around the entire lake. And what they do, the typically their procedure is they put uh, so many fish per acre. For instance, Rotary Lake in Jackson is three and a half acres in size. They put uh, 1,900 in there. So 2,000 divided by three, about 600 fish per acre. Um, I don't know how big the one in Perryville is, but they put 2,700 in that one, I believe, in Legion Lake. Um, I'm unaware. They probably put more in St. Louis because of it being an urban area. Uh, one in Farmington, I don't know how big it is, but they put only 1,200 in that one. But either way, uh, from November 1st is when they stock these and when you're able to start fishing them. From November 1st to February 1st is catch and release only and artificial lures only. You cannot use corn, worms, or minnows, and you cannot use soft plastics that have scents in them, such as garlic scent or whatever it is. But you can use soft plastics as long as they don't have any kind of scent. So keep in mind you cannot use corn, minnows, worms, or like scented marshmallows or Berkeley power baits that are scented and all that. Um, what I did, so we're going to go here today and we're going to try to take advantage of this. So, like I said, it's catch and release only those first two months. One thing that's very important to remember is that rainbow trout are very sensitive. Uh, when you touch them, you need to make sure your hands are wet first. But more importantly, it's easier to also get a dip net as well. You don't see me typically use a dip net because, I, in my opinion, I like the challenge of of not having one uh, but you will see me use a dip net today I, I bought one just for this reason um, like I said you want to keep your hands wet because uh, trout are very easy to kill when handling them uh, so during this catch and release period you want to make sure you get these trout back in the water unharmed as quick as you can you know hurry up and take a, a picture try to make it under one minute because those fish are very sensitive all right, so what I did, one of the things I did was I typed in, I wanted to know what to use, what is the best lures for rainbow trout, for stock trout. I found, I did a lot of reading on the internet, I found the top 10 lures that you can use. Since I wasn't able to get all of them, I did buy six of them, six different ones out of the 10. I'm going to go over them with you. The number one was the Rebel Wee Crawdad. That is the... It's not the very smallest one, but it's one size from the smallest Rebel Crawdad. You can get them at any Walmart. You see me typically use these uh, one size from the biggest, the one without the bumps on it, but the second biggest one for smallmouth and goggle eye and whatever. Uh, but you want to go with the smallest one. When you're fishing for these stock trout, uh, they're generally only going to be 10 to 15 inches long. So you got to think small, but these fish always prefer small baits. Uh, that was number one. All right, you also got these. These are called trout magnets. They're very small little split fork tail, split tail. Uh, no, they're not. They're single tail. They're just little tiny one, one inch rubber lures with 164 ounce jig head. Uh, a guy I personally talked to told me he has the best luck on white, so I went with white. Uh, it comes with five, six spares, but it only comes with one spare jig head. So I bought me a pack of uh, jig heads, one thirty-second ounce. That's light enough for me. Okay, as far as line goes, you do not want to use over six-pound line. You want to use two, four, and at the most six-pound line. So I bought me some six-pound smooth casting Berkeley trialing. Uh, and you also want to have your drag as weak as it can go. Um, to avoid them being able to break you off. Now, when your drag is set all the way weak, you can control it with your fingers. Uh, once they start getting a little more tired toward the end, when you know that they're wore out, then you can uh, tighten your drag a little bit. But until then, you don't want to. Uh, as far as them trout magnets go, I was told to also use them under a float. And it works really well, so I'm going to try that as well. All right, somewhere else in the top ten, I think it was number three and four. The Rapala Countdown. Now, on these Rapalas, you don't want to get 
one over the size of five. I would not go over the size five because then you're getting too big. The good thing about the countdown compared to the original Rapala is it sinks when you're not reeling it in. As soon as you cast it, it starts sinking. This will work better when you when them trout at a certain depth or if you're fishing a little deeper a lake or whatever, you get it down to where you're going because it's weighted. Now this original Rapala, it only goes down once you reel in and it only goes three to five foot down. This one, you could get it down 10 feet if you want to. I don't know how fast it sinks. It depends on the weight of your line. But those two lures are also very well. I prefer gold when it's cloudy and the white and black when it's sunny. There's other colors, but those two colors is really all you need. All right, another one is the Rebel Crick Hopper or Cricket. Grasshopper, Cricket, whatever. It's a Cricket, this one. Works very well also. All right, now we're gonna go with inline spinners. You got your rooster tails, you got your blue foxes, and you got your mets. All three very wonderful lures. Rooster tail is probably, in my opinion, it's the worst of the three because they are notorious for the spinner not spinning. Now on the smaller models, they work better. But once you get above that one eighth, they tend to stick a lot of times and you gotta constantly twitch them. So if you got the money to spin, you're better off getting a MEPS or a Blue Fox. They spin better and they will stay put. Preferred colors, Bumblebee. That's just my opinion. My opinion don't mean nothing to a lot of people, but yellow and black Bumblebee colors or just plain white and then black would be my third choice. Rooster tails, different sizes. You got ones with silver blades, gold blades. Gold blades is what you want for a cloudy day. Silver blades for a sunny day. All right. And this is a very light rooster tail, a little 132 ounce. Now these are what you consider your MEP spinners. They tend to spin a little bit better. Got one that's gold, got one that's silver. This here is a blue fox. Blue Fox are a little more costly sometimes, but I'll tell you what, they very rarely do not spin. As long as you're reeling it in, it does the work for you. Very good lures for rainbow trout. And that's about it. I, that's all I'm going to use is those. I'm going to start off with the with the crawdad. I'm gonna, if I don't get nothing after a half an hour, I'll switch to the Rapala countdown and uh, original Rapala. i got the trout magnets. Another good choice if you can find them light enough. Marabou jigs. These are known for crappie, but they will work for trout. And dark colors seem to outdo the light colors. Black, brown. Uh, those that I have right here, these are 1 16th ounce. That's because that is the lightest they had at Walmart in them. So I would, would have got 132 ounce, uh, but they didn't have them. So, um, all right, let's just see how we do today. Should be a fun day. It's something I don't normally do. Like I said, I'm going to quit rambling on so we can actually show you guys some fish here. Until next time, hit that like button and please subscribe. It's cold. Look at that wind. Oh, I just missed one. Man. I'm using this on here. He just didn't stay on. I had one, though. fish finally all right i'm sticking with this lure finally took an hour oh he got off man shoot took an hour to get it but he got off got one 
I got one. Finally. Hey, we done one up, buddy. Hey, come get the dip net. Come get the dip net. All right, folks, I got my first trout. Put on one of those white things. Those white things. Put one of those on in a jig head. Second cast, I got one. You let it fall about four seconds and then reel it in real slow. The trout magnet. We were just using the wrong lure earlier. That's what it was. That, that trout magnet worked on the second cast. All right, folks, I finally changed up and finally got me a rainbow. He's about on a 10-incher. Good job, hon. Okay, I'll, I'll back up. We'll get him over here in the grass. We can't have them out very long. We'll just get a quick uh, picture. Okay, first I want you to... Come on. Go ahead. We gotta be quick. Okay. That's it. All right, folks, we're gonna get her back in the water. First rainbow of the day. On the smaller side, just a 10 incher. We finally figured out what they were hitting. The little white trout magnet, 130 second ounce jig. Finally got some. There he goes, he's fine. All right, what you want to do is get one of them jig heads. I opened them up. Oh. Just missed one again. There he is. All right, get the net. Get the net, get the net. All right, folks, second trout, finally. I've had three, four get off. I'm keeping tension on it the whole time. Get it? Yes! That's a big one too, that's a bigger. Folks, well, I, this, one's, this one's about 12 or 13 inches. Finally paid off, wow. White trout magnet with a cork. Folks, what happened was it took us two hours to figure out the best method is to set a a trout magnet, which is a little white jig about an inch long with a 32nd ounce jig head, three feet under a cork, you just toss it out, let it settle about three seconds and just start reeling it in medium speed. And I have missed so many fish because this jig head hook is so small that it makes it really difficult for them to stay on. I mean, I've lost way more than I should have. It's very frustrating. We toughed it out. I'm going back on. Let me calm down a little bit. Do it quick. We gotta get him back in. Come on. Alright, folks, we're gonna get her back in. Boy, they are some squirmy things, let me tell you. It finally made our trip worth it, though. That is a beautiful rainbow. What a beauty. All right. All right, we're gonna come back. Hopefully, I'm off February the 1st. I don't know what day it falls on. I'd have to look up on my phone on the calendar. But starting February the 1st is when you can use corn, worms, or whatever. And I wanna come here on that first day and, uh, use some corn because it'd be so much easier just a corn and a split shot and there she goes she's fine and uh, I think it'll be a lot easier method get them. but you got to be here that first day because they're gonna get wiped out real quick after that after the uh, regulations change it won't take but a week for this place to get fished out. Everybody will be coming here and doing the same thing. So, you, know, you gotta really be quick about it. So, 
I'm just praying that it falls on, either falls on a weekend or maybe I can take a day off of work and come over here. All you need to do is bring one little can of corn and it'll last you all day. A bag of split shots and some small hooks. There we go. All right, folks, fish number three here. Finally, it's a bluegill, a big bluegill. <laughs> I was wondering why it wasn't fighting. It's big though. It's bigger than my hand. <laughs> well, it's not a trout, folks, but it's a nice bluegill. Seven inches anyway. On the trout magnet. Huh. And you just never know. At least it was something I went about I went about an hour without a single nibble. Not bad. That's no reason. I'm surprised they're this big in here for a city park lake that's only three acres. You think they'd be uh stunted, but that's a decent size blue you know. I'm really surprised there. Huh. Ha, ha, ha.